Okay, thank you for the introduction. So today I'm going to talk about the differential linear cryptanalysis of ISPO. This is a joint work with Ivan from Veneta, Hong Jun Wu, and I am Tao Huang. Here is the outline of this talk. First, I will introduce the ISPO authenticated cipher. Then, I will present the differential linear distinguishing attack on ISPO. After that, I will give this state recovery attack on ISPO. I will also provide some experimental results and followed by the conclusion. So ISPO is a hardware-oriented single-pass authenticated cipher. It is a submission to, S, uh, to the CISA competition. It is designed by Pavel Morawiecki et al. It uses Dublin framework and uh, K-check-like permutation. There are three parameters, the key size, the nonce, and the secret message number. So the primary, uh, primary um, parameter set is uh, ISPO128. It has 128 bits, key, nonce, and secret message number. <laughs> there are also other two variants there, the ISPO128A and ISPO256A. They do not have secret message number. They have different key size and uh, 96 bit nonce. So the state of ISPO is organized as follows. You can see this picture. So it's uh, organized as this 4x5 array of 64 bit world. And uh, it's, the world is filled first the name, and then the column, and then the rows. So the padding of ISPO like this. At least two bits will be padded. The first bit is a frame bit, which is defined to be one for NAS AD block and all the plain text blocks, except the NAS one, and the zero otherwise. And the uh, next is uh, one zero padding. So it's just one and the uh, minimum number of zero to make it, it as a full block. The block length is uh, at most 1024 for ISPO 128 and 128A, and it's at most 960 for ISPO 256. Here is the uh, encryption and authentication. So first, the key and the nonce, and uh, the IV is mixed. After that, a 12-round permutation is performed. Then the secret message number here is injected into the state, and then process the uh, AD blocks after padding. Then the permutation used is uh, six round permutation, P6. And the encryption is just X or the plain text with the state, part of the state, like a stream cipher. And uh, then the plain text is padded and uh, injected into the state. Finally, the type is generated after a six round permutation. Then we look, take a look at this permutation, P. It has five operations. First, mu is a linear operation defined by this matrix multiplication on a finite field. Then, rho is just the rotation of each of the 64-bit world. And the, the rotation constant are different. Next is pi which is the reorder of the 64-bit world defined by these two formulas. And this is the S-box layer phi. It has five-bit S-box on each row, each five-bit rows. And uh, it can be implemented using this formula. Then the adult round constant. The security goal of ISPO is listed here. here. So generally, it has 128-bit security, except for the ISPO uh, 256A, and the confidentiality is claimed to be 256-bit. Here are the security claims provided in the original submission. So when the nonce is, is reused, it has intermediate level of robustness. And uh, it says that the key recovery attack is not possible, and uh, authentic authenticity is not threatened by non-reuse. 
So here we will apply the differential linear quick analysis to the s four permutation. Um, here is a, the differential linear quick analysis is, was introduced by Langford and Hillman in 1994. It is a combination of the differential quick analysis and the linear quick analysis. The basic idea is we add some input difference into the state and uh, then we study some non-random behavior in the output, usually the bias of the linear mask. Here's the overview of our differential linear analysis. First, we divide this six round permutation into two parts. The differential round and the linear round, each of them will be three rounds. And then we choose the input difference. After that, we choose the linear masks. Then we will improve our analysis by some operations. After that, we just put them together and uh, determine the biases. So we look at these three differential rounds. Um, intuitively, it's better to use just one bit and prop propagate uh, one round forward and uh, one round backward. But actually, it's not possible for s -per because the input is restricted to only four rows of the five, or the five uh, only four columns of all the five columns. So we have to use two active S box in the first round. And then it will be at most eight active S box in the second round and no more than 32 active S boxes after that. Uh, but we don't really care about the actual number of the active S box in the in third round because it's as long as, it's, as long as it's small, then it's good for us. And we found those five input differences, D1 and, and D, uh, D1 to D5. And we listed there. Here is just one slice, and they can be rotated to other positions in the state. Then we con constructing the linear characteristics. It's also straight round. Now we can just use one bit linear um, relation and uh, and uh, propagate it backward and forward for this three round. And uh, for the S box, we just use one to one identical mapping because this keeps the Hamming weight low while the probability is quite good. Although it's not optimal, but it's, yeah, it's good. And we finally we find three linear masks. L1, L2, and L3. Right here. Here are the input mask and the output mask for the three round linear. Now we have the, some observations will help us to improve the attack. So we know that we have the full information of these green cells, green bits in a slice at the beginning of each permutation. So even after this linear operation, we can still know five bits of them. And after rho and the pi, the position will be like this. And which means we will know some bits in the input of the S box layer, which will greatly help us to improve the probability. Especially for this certain case, we have this bit to be one and this bit to be zero. Then the, if the input difference is two, then the output difference is two, which probability one. Yeah, that's good for us. Then for the last round, we can just bypass it with some probability. The idea is when the four or five bits of output of an Xbox is unknown, then it is possible to recover some of the input bits from the output of the Xbox. Of course, we need to yeah, this is probabilistic, so we need to pay some price for it, but uh, it's better than the linear relation. So we can remove the last round. Now we concatenate the differential and the linear characteristics. So here we choose D2, as we mentioned before, as input difference, and we choose L1, left rotated by 33 bits as linear characteristics. So it's will give us the largest bias experimentally. Now we can see the distinguishing attack. 
First, we generate 2233.9 pairs of two block plain text. Then we just discard those pairs that cannot recover the one bit in the fifth round. So there are 2221 pairs left with the information of one bit in the fifth round. Then we compute this bits and uh, analyze the XOR differences. And we find out the largest bias. If the bias is, yeah, we find the bias. If this bias is larger than 22 minus 10.2, then we claim that this is as poor, it's not a random permutation. And the success rate is about 99%. Now we extend this distinguishing attack to state recovery attack. We have four unknown words for S4128 and S4128A. Yeah, you do to use three here. The idea is this, the value of these bits will affect the input of the first round S box. This will in turn affect the output bias. So first step is to recover U0 and U3. Remember we have these five known bits and then we are interested. We are interested in those two bits, two red bits. We can express these two bits as some unknown bits with some known constant can be computed from the input. And also B3 can be expressed as these two unknown bits in U0 and U3 and uh, another known constant. Then we test the value of B, B1 and B3, and we get this distribution table. So we only interested in, the, in this red. So when the value is 1 and 0, the bias is very large. It's just 2, 2, negative 0.3. Now we can generate some pairs and then collect the data for the A0 and the A1. When the largest counter appears V0 and uh, V1, then we can compute this to establish some equations for the unknown bits. After that, we just rotate the input difference mask to all the other positions, and then we can recover all the bits in U0 and U3. Similarly, we can recover U2. Now we have more information on the state. So we just fix some input bits to get better probability for the S boxy. And then we use D1 and L2 left rotate by 58 bits. We can establish equation for B2 here as unknown bits and a constant. And similarly, we have 2236.7 pairs of two block print text and uh, the Success rate is 99.6 for each bit. And for U1, is similar. Yeah, we have these known bits and uh, constant values. We have these bars. Then we need to, we need 37.7 pairs of two block plain text. And the success rate is 98.7% for each bit. Because this is a statistic attack, it's possible that we have some error bit in our attack. So we can correct the error bit. Of course, one way is to use more data, but uh, the better way we think is just to enumerate the possible error bit. You can see when each bit is correct with probability 0.99, and the probability that the number of error bits is less than Eight is given by this number, so it's very large. Then we can compute up to seven error bits, and the complexity is two to thirty-seven point five. Yeah, it's reasonable for us to use this to correct the error bit. Yeah, here is summary of the state recovery attack. So the data complexity is two to uh, forty-five. Point eight, then the time complexity, the complexity the same, and we can spend some price to for the correction. The memory cost is 
negligible, and uh, the success rate is close to one. Then we look at the case for S per two five six A. We have two issues because now we have these bits unknown. It's sixty four bit word unknown. Yeah, so it's in the first round and in the last round we have this information. To deal with this, we just fix only one bit in the first round, and then we have to use some linear relation in the last round. So we can recover this U4 at the first step. We still use D2 and L1, left rotate by 33 bits, but here the bias is much larger than before. So the data needed is 2258.7 for this case. And we have to adjust the recovery attack for other states, uh, other unknown world as well. So like this. After that, the total complexity is around 2260. Uh, still less than the allowed bound, which is 2262. So here is, we still can recover the state of S per 256A. Sorry, yeah, I pressed wrong. Yeah, we look at the implication of these attacks. So for S per 128, uh, since the sequence message number is used, so we can just decrypt any context and then we can do the forgery attack. And for the other two version which do not have a secret message number, then we can recover the key and everything is known to us. The experimental results. We run it on the server with 64 cores and we can recover U0 and U3 in about 15 hours. And then we can recover U2 with three and a half days and uh, with another three and a half days, we can recover U1. So it's a practical attack. So the designer has um, decided to amend their security claim according to this analysis. So that the security only holds when the SMN is present and uh, unique. So it has to use some nonce mechanics in the cipher. So here's the conclusion. First, we have some state distinguishing attack and the state recovery attack on uh, SPOR, especially for the uh, SPOR 128 and the SPOR 128A, we can do it practi practically. So the original security claims on non reuse security of the SPOR do not hold, we show that. So for the designers, the input and output constraints need to be carefully analyzed in order to ensure the security of the cipher. So that's all for the talk. Thank you. And uh, any questions? Yes. I think uh, one of the reasons is that the linear diffusion layer in K-check is much stronger, you can see. So here, yeah, if you look at the, yeah, here, after the linear, linear layer, you can still know five of the bits, and also the inverse of this linear layer is easy, much easy, easier than K-check, I guess. Yeah, for K-check, if you want to inverse, <laughs> yeah, it will be quite trouble. 